All right, guys, welcome to the part two of our video. This is kind of a bonus video for setting up 3D footsteps. In the last one, we set up a system that sounds like this. When we press play on our animation, when you get closer or farther away from the character, the 3D footstep sound will take place and you'll be able to hear it in the spatial field. In this one though, instead of just having one single sound play, we're gonna have different sounds play based on the material you're stepping on, and we can set that up, well, pretty easily. Just kinda of have to go in here and change some things around. Uh, this is the notify system that we created in the last one. We're gonna change this up just a little bit to make sure that we're getting the right physics material, and we have to set up our sound cues and physics materials, and otherwise that's probably all it's gonna be. So I'm gonna create a new folder in my materials category. I'm just gonna call it physics materials. You can put this wherever you want. And we're just gonna go under physics and create a physics material. This one's going to be called concrete. I'm gonna duplicate this and we'll call this gravel. And you can set these up for all the materials you have in your game. Uh, there's, You can have as many as you like, but I'm just gonna do two for this case. And these two things will serve as names for what the character is actually stepping on. So how are we actually going to calculate this? Um, the best way that I like to do this is to actually use line tracing. So we're actually going to line trace once the notify function runs. We'll line trace from the center all the way down to underneath where the feet are stepping on. And once it hits a material, we'll ask what that material is. And whatever that material is, we'll set it as a parameter in our sound cue and then play a said sound. So to do this, we're just going to go into, well, we already have our world location. So we'll just type line trace by channel. And our starting point will be the world location, and our end point will be below it a little bit, I guess. So I'm just going to subtract a vector. We'll subtract a Z value of maybe 50, and then we'll plug that in, and we'll see what that looks like. We'll set up our draw debug for five seconds. And I don't know if you can actually see the draw debug happening in the actual animation. Oh, you can. Okay, that's helpful. <laughs> so that's what it looks like. So when you're stepping on something, it just asks what it's actually stepping on, and then we'll figure out what to do from there. Our actual hit result, we'll just break this and find out some information about what we're actually hitting. And we want the physical material. So we'll just type get display name, and we'll see what actually that looks like once we actually print this. So from here, we can actually get the name of what we're stepping on. We'll just switch this in the sound queue using a parameter. And this is going to be kind of changed up a bit. I'm going to go back to my sound cues, and we'll just create a footstep queue just generally for everything under sounds. Create a sound queue. We'll call this the sc underscore footsteps. And this will kind of be the generic footstep noise we use for everything. I'm going to use my modulator, which I actually like. Uh, I kind of like this because it just changes the sound a tiny, tiny bit. You could change the volume or the pitch, and it's it's nice to have. I'm going to copy my footstep sounds for concrete, and I'm just going to call this concrete. And then for the other material, we have gravel. I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing. Copy that, paste it, call it gravel. So we'll create our switch, and this will be what we're actually using. So for my uh, first value, I'm going to use gravel. For the zero value, we're going to use concrete and if the parameter is unset we'll use concrete too since we don't really have any others we're just not going to do any here but if you have more stuff that you want to stack up down here for other physics materials you can go ahead and just add them here too our output we stick it in there and for the sound cue we're pretty much done so moving back to our notify we're going to go into the play sound at location and we're going to actually I realize this is maybe the wrong node to use here we're going to go ahead and do play sound we're going to go ahead and do spawn sound at location and pretty much have everything set up the same way. We just need this return value pin here. So for our sound, we're just going to select footstep. And we'll do the cue that we just created, so sc underscore footsteps. And we'll set our attenuation to the footstep attenuation, and everything else is pretty much set. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and do our int parameter set integer parameter and in the name we have well a name we actually forgot to set up which is going to be right here our name will be material and we'll type material and for the actual integer we're just going to use 
indices in an array. So I'm going to go ahead and create a local variable and call this materials. We'll set this as an array and it will be a string array. And from here we will find item and we will find the display name of the physics material. And we will use that integer for our integer parameter. So, so I'll move this up here, kind of keep this clean. And to just remind ourselves what we're actually dealing with here, we will look at our materials. Uh, our default physics, physical material will be zero. And the second one will be gravel. So let's go ahead and set that up. Our first value will be default physical material. And our second one will be concrete. And our third one will be gravel. So if you kind of see how these are set up, we have 0, 1, and 2. Just like right here, we have 0, 1, well, technically 0, 1, and 2. If we want to make it a little bit more easy, maybe we'll just do this for ourselves. Uh, there we go. That's better. So now we have 0, 1, and 2 for specifying exactly what index we're going to be using for our array right here with the different names that could come up, uh, which will be set using our physical materials. So now for actually setting those, uh, we'll just do this really quick to test to see how everything works. I'm going to go ahead and place a cube. And we'll scale this like so. This will be our gravel. I'm just going to drag gravel right into the physical material. And we'll see how that works in game. Awesome. And that is how you would set up a system with different types of footstep sounds. Now I think we got some errors here. Uh, just as a wrap up for the tutorial, we're going to figure out what those are caused by. Probably just something I set up wrong. Uh, I have, yeah, 10 errors right here, just for different, I guess, just received nothing in the set integer parameter. So to fix this, typically what will happen, we'll just find out where it's actually getting that. So it's the return value on the sound at location, which is right here. This is invalid, or it's coming over at least as invalid. Uh, so what we're going to do just to make sure everything is fine, we'll just check the validity by typing is valid. And we'll just use this macro really quick to wrap everything up. That might have been caused by the server. I'm not entirely sure exactly what the issue there was, but sometimes it just won't pick it up. And this should be okay without any errors arising. Nope, no errors. So that is it. That is how you'd set that up. If you want to create more footsteps, I guess all you would do is just kind of create more parameters here. And then in your actual queue, you just set your materials, just create new materials, and set up the physics materials so that you can use those on the meshes. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. Be sure to join the Discord, ask questions if you need to. I'll see you guys in the next one.